Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danielle, AKA Stitcherista here on YouTube. And today is Wednesday, July. I got it right. <laughs> July 24th. So you guys are getting all the videos this week, right? I my original plan wasn't to come on here today, but I have a couple things. I just got done work, which today was a very, very challenging work day. So glad to have gotten through that. And you know, I see the ladies at the retreat and I belong to a Facebook group called the Dull Woman something. It's a fantastic group because these women are anything but dull. But it's about just finding peace with yourself and living a simpler life. And I find myself gravitating towards a very simple makeup look because Man, do I not, first of all, as I get older and your skin changes, you pile on the makeup. For me anyway, it just accentuates like the wrinkles and the crevices and all of that. And I got up today and our job started earlier than, it, than they normally do. And I didn't have a lot of time. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to put on like the the basics and that's what I did and I probably look like I have nothing on but um that's okay right and um yeah I don't know what my point was with that but I saw so many women at the retreat who don't wear makeup look beautiful and what's funny is that on Wednesday Normally when I go, especially going to some place like that, I'll get all fixed up. I'll fix hair, put on makeup, all of that. And I had to wind up going to the dentist Wednesday morning before I left for the retreat. And I sort of just ran out of time. And I said, you know what? Who cares? I'm like, I'm not going to run into anybody anyway. <laughs> the joke was on me, obviously, because when I got there, I saw Ann and Sherry in the lobby and I saw a whole bunch of people, like a whole bunch of people were there and I felt naked. Like I felt odd because I usually don't go out of the house per se without makeup and hair done. Um, I'm inching towards that though. And nobody really gives a shit. Like when I really think about it, nobody's worried about what you look like. Nobody is worried about what you look like because they're worried about what they look like. Think about it that way. Okay, so all of that to say, you know, women are beautiful without makeup, truly. Okay, reading. So I did finish today, this morning, the last one by Will Dean. Highly recommend. It was very good. I won't, I won't even say the ending was just like, what? Good though. Highly recommend. Now my next book is going to be, so I've read 62 books this year. My next book is going to be Keep It in the Family by John Mars. And <laughs> I got a mug in the mail today that chapter 39 in this book is one word, fuck. And so there's been all these t-shirts, sweatshirts, memes, all about chapter 39 yourself, you know, and stuff like that. So I got a mug from Etsy and I'm just going to put it on the bookshelf. I'm not going to use it. But look what it says. Chapter 39 off, chapter 39 you, chapter 39 this, chapter 39 that, chapter third, what the actual chapter 39. I thought it was so funny because you could have this in public and people would be like, what does that even mean? So you would have to read this book to realize. Yeah. So that's going to be my next read. Okay. So I did do a little bit of stitching yesterday on strawberry jam after I got done the video and all of that. So just a, let's do this. Just a teeny tiny little bit more. Got done the green and the green and I'm still, yeah, I'm not done that section of green yet. It goes down a little bit, but enjoying it very much. And you know, I feel like the hardest part about a cross stitch project is starting. Because when you start, you're not seeing anything yet. 
Like when I get a good chunk of this done, I am usually more motivated to keep going because then you can really start to see it come together. I mean, this is going to look magnificent. It doesn't look like much now, but stay tuned. And it's so funny because my friend Brandon, who wound all of my pip and chip bobbins, um, he messaged me last night and said, you're in my brain because he had just bought a Carolyn Manning Designs also. A lot of people love her patterns. I love them so very much. And I don't know why I haven't stitched more. Yeah. Oh, I did want to show you. Remember I said I bought four patterns for $18 her Christmas in July sale. And I'm sure it's going through the rest of July. So you should go check out her website. But I wanted to show you the other three that I bought. Why? Where's it? What happened? Okay. So I bought this one called Riptide, which I, I feel like I might, you might get a little tired of these colors, but the eye catching of it, the, I mean, look at that. It only, it only calls for four colors. Holy crap though. When you're done this piece, you would probably not want to see teal for a long time, but look at it. It caught my eye and I was like, I got to buy that. Something so very simple. That would be a fantastic piece to work on at a retreat. Okay. The other one I bought is called Something About the Sun. Love the colors in this one so much. Look at that. <gasps> like I said, these patterns just tick the box for symmetry for me. I like things that look all nice and neat and I just hit a button. Yeah. These surely do that. And then the last one, why did I click off of that? The last one is called Blush, and it is very similar to Strawberry Jam, except much different colors, but it's like purple. <gasps> Look at that. It looks like a quilt block, right? And that's what she designed this one after. Love, love. And again, with huge blocks of color, very nice and easy to work on at a retreat when you are talking just about the entire time you're there. Okay. So I also wanted to answer some questions that I had received in the past couple days. So one question I had, and if you're new to the channel, I used to, for many years, do a retreat vlog. Whenever I went to a retreat, I would film part of me driving and I would talk and then I would record each night in the room and give you a recap of that day. And then I would piece all that together when I got home and put up a video and half the time the video was like an hour long. I did that for years. Here recently, and I, I don't remember the last time I did one, but it, I want to say it's easily been a year, maybe two years. What was happening? And I know some of you who don't have a channel probably, it's hard to understand the grind that a channel becomes when you do one for, I've had my channel for eight years now, when you've had one for that long. And for many years, I had a video every day for like three or four years in a row. Yes, I know, crazy. What started to happen was that when I would go to a retreat, trying to remember everything that happened in the course of a day or trying to take notes and then remembering to record and then put all of that together when I got home, it started to take away from the enjoyment of the retreat. And I thought, okay, this is not my purpose, right? This is not the purpose of me going to these retreats. It's to get away and have a break. So that's why I stopped doing them. And I'll be honest, because someone, the person that wrote me this comment, they said they missed them, what I consider doing one in September. I will give little snippets of things that I remember, like I told you about the guy in the elevator and about me taking the wrong coffee at Dunkin' Donuts. But it just, it's almost stressful for me to try to remember all the things that happened during the day to talk about. And also... I realized that in the past on my channel, how do I put this? That maybe I have talked about 
people and situations too much that, you know, there are things that should be kept private and not necessarily put on um, this type of forum. So I'm very careful now about situations and things that I talk about. And I tend to only talk about like things that I do, like, cause you know, I'm transparent myself on here. Like the Dunkin' Donuts grabbing the wrong coffee or seeing the guy in the elevator. You know, things that happen directly to me and that necessarily aren't involving someone else or happening to someone else. So I hope you guys understand that. I don't want to say I'll never do them again. And you know, I feel like too that if I didn't have a full-time job where that has also really factored into what I do on this channel and how tired I have become over the years doing this, um, that I would probably do them too, because that would, it, it's a fun video. It's a good time when I tell all the stories. But like I said, I, I'm really conscious now of talking about others and situations and things like that um, to protect people's privacy and um, yeah, just to, just to be, you know, a kind person, I guess, too. Okay, so someone then had asked me, how do you find out about retreats? Now, nine times out of 10, the ones I have found out about, I have found out by word of mouth. The ones in Ocean City, which unfortunately is closed. I can't even give out the email or anything anymore because we are at capacity and the organizer doesn't want to have a bigger room, which I get it. I totally get it. The Stitch NJ one that Arlene Cohen puts on, um, she has a Facebook group and I know that she even mentions it probably in one of her floss tube videos or in a few of them because there's a wait list that you can get on for that one. And I know there are other retreats like Annabella's, I think. Is it Annabella? I think it is. Excuse me. Annabella's has a retreat in the fall, I want to say. There's also Steel City Stitchers. There is StitchCon that Pam and Steph and Keepsakes do. There's a whole bunch of retreats. So I would suggest doing a Google search or joining some Facebook cross-stitch groups and searching because when you belong to a Facebook group, there's usually a bar at the top that you can search for any topic. So if you put in like retreat, I guarantee you things are going to come up. So that's how you just got to search. I was fortunate enough that I went to when the Langford, the hotel in Ocean City, Salty Yarns put on a retreat. I had went to that retreat five or six years in a row and knowing the people there heard about some, heard about the other one in Ocean City that I go to. So yeah, that's how you just have to do a little bit of research and, and figure it out. And then the last question I had, and then I will let you guys go because I'm going to do some stitching and sit here and watch some shows and try to relax. Bill is working overtime. Um, today is his last day at his part-time job. Um, he retires next Wednesday, but he is going to be working at um, another company, but he's going to give up all the part-time stuff because he doesn't need to do that. So tonight's his last night, but I still have a couple hours before he's home. So I will be able to sit and stitch and, and relax. So the last question I had, someone asked me about stamped cross stitch. Have I done it? What are the pros and cons? And is it frowned upon at retreats? So I have never done stamped cross stitch. So I cannot give you the pros and cons of it. Um, again, I would probably do a search on YouTube because I guarantee you there is someone that has done it. I know when we were at the Stitch NJ retreat just this past last week, Anne had gotten something off of the freebie table that was actually a stamped cross stitch pillowcase. And I want to say one of the pros, just by looking at a stamped cross stitch piece, one of the pros is that the pattern is already on the stamped fabric. You don't have to follow a pattern or anything except to know what colors. And it might even be color coded. I've never really looked at one that closely, but to me, that would be a pro. Absolutely, not having to follow a pattern. A con, I don't know. A con, I think, because usually with stamped cross stitch, I don't think there are holes in the fabric. I might be completely wrong about that. I know in this pillowcase, so you're having to really make sure you pierce the fabric where the symbols are. I guess, 
Again, I've never done it myself. I've always wanted to stitch either on fabric or a perforated paper. And then, um, is it frowned upon at retreats? And this is the, the question I wanted to address the most because what I have experienced in all of my years of going to retreats, and it's been, well, I was going to retreats before I had a channel. So um, it's been a good long bit. I've probably been going to retreats for about 10 years now. No craft is frowned upon. Everyone is very accepting and curious of other crafts. I have seen crochet. I have seen knitting. I have seen people work on plastic canvas. I have even seen like leather making, um, cr you know, stuff that is outside the realm of needlepoint or cross stitch. Hell, I even at a handful of retreats brought diamond painting and you do not know how many people I had come up to me. Can you show me how to do that? What are you doing? Stitchers by trade, I feel like, are completely accepting and wonderful of any kind of craft because most of us do more than one. I mean, I diamond paint, cross stitch, I painted, um, scrapbooking. Um, there are many other, I mean, we do so many different things that I'm just curious about any craft that involves anything, color, whatever. So nothing is frowned upon. Please, if you go to a retreat, do not ever be afraid of bringing something that is not cross stitch. Don't. You can bring anything. Bring anything you want. It doesn't say cross stitch retreat. It's a retreat. I like to think of them as a crafting retreat. So, yeah. There's the, I mean, I answer the questions. If someone asks me a question in a video, I will, in the comments, I answer it in the comment. But for those kinds of questions, I like to also address them on here for those that don't go in and read the comments and my answers and things like that. But I hope you guys, oh, okay, one little tiny other thing. I don't have them yet. You know me and my gadgets. And somebody commented, and I loved it. They said, their husband says it's like a cockpit of an airplane. <laughs> having all their stuff set up and she is absolutely right because once I get settled in I got everything right so and I'm so grateful to have Bill's tablet because it's already come in immense hand it's already come in handy for what I want it to do but in working with perforated paper and all of my things I have ordered two more gadgets and I won't tell you what they are it's going to be a little bit because they have to be made, but when they get here, I will be sure to show you. One is personalized. It's going to have my name on it, and um, I can't wait. I can't wait till they get here, so stay tuned for that. It'll be a couple weeks yet, but I hope you guys are all having a good week. We are in the middle of the week. It is Wednesday here. It is so hard to believe that a week ago I was going to the retreat, that it's already been a week. I just... The time, the time just goes by. And Bill and I were watching TV last night and we saw a commercial that said, I know everyone's thinking about Christmas. What? <laughs> I know Christmas is approaching. Like it, it is, it is here. I mean, we are more than halfway through the year, but it is still like 90,000 degrees outside. So... I can't even fathom Christmas shopping, putting up the tree, lights, all that stuff. Although I welcome it. I welcome the cooler weather. Love, uh, probably my favorite months of the year are October, November, December, for sure. Um, but yeah, wow, hard, hard to think about that right now. Um, and I mean, believe it or not, even though, like I said, we're still, you know, we're at the tail end of July. There's back to school now. Like, didn't you, I feel like the kids just got out of school, but it's already like in the works of going back to school, go back, do your school shopping. Like, can we put the brakes on for a minute? Right? Yeah. Anyway, I'm babbling now. I hope you guys all have a good rest of your week. I don't know when I'll do another video. Who knows? Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> I have no idea. I do them obviously when the mood strikes and I have stuff to share with you guys. So 
As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so very much for watching and subscribing and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.